All praises, Campbell, Campbell, Nathan, and Zombie. I'm going to start the music. Once again, I don't own the rights to the music. It's not for me to redistribute in any way. The copyright belongs to someone else. And just for this channel only to learn, no, not for this channel only, but for, uh, for others just to learn. It's not for resale of any kind. too loud it's 12 o'clock here uh in the night away in ucm campbell to kennel if it's morning where you are to see come i hope quickly on bote welcome to another uh edition of my of this channel to tony le masaki thank you for all of those who have turned in and for your support um I welcome all of you who are Banabetu scattered across the earth. And for those non Banabetu, you're welcome also. Uh, uh, once again, this channel is not for everybody. It's just for what I was called for myself. I think people want to think it's the the work of the devil. That's that's their that's their choice. But we're gonna talk about why people are gonna keep continuing to think like that is because of the way that the days of Noka or Noah have been misconstrued because for one, um, people forget that in the concept of the tares and the wheat, someone had to be the people who would sow the tares as there were those who were sowing the wheat. And it's those who are sowing the tares that are gonna always be the one that are gonna bring the biggest, biggest deception. And the problem is, is that those people are always meant to do what they're supposed to do, sabotage the wheat, okay? And they're also supposed to make sure that uh, the, the wheat don't grow to what they need to be until it's the time of the harvest, okay? And that's the way the concept, if you look at uh, who were the tares before the flood, they would have been Cain, 
and those who follow Cain. And who would have been the wheat? Those would have been the, the, the descendants of Seth, Seth, because remember, Abel was killed. And he was then chosen to replace him. Now, of course, we know that the scriptures actually say that uh, Tata, Tata Adam and Mama Eva had other children, especially daughters. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about them here in a minute. But, um, you know, this is going to be a clear understanding that as I ask these questions, you're going to come to the realization, especially when I read the scripture of Isaiah 1 and 43, I said, please take a good look at the word that, of those places, because that's why we're doing what we're doing, is to liberate the, the minds of the people from a delusion that was given to them because the terror's job is to make sure what the inheritance of the world stays away from the wheat or that the, the wheat don't inherit their inheritance. So in the case of the Old Testament and the New Testament, who would be the sower of the tares would be Esau and any one of those kingdoms that worship pagan gods. Okay. And then who would be the wheat? The, the, the post, the children are supposed to come out of the lineage of Shem, Samuel. Okay, so this is the pre this is the premise for what I'm going to talk about is many people don't even know that this is the whole concept of what the people have been running this world on is you are meant to miss the boat, meaning that they created a society that makes you think that you have received your salvation when you have actually rejected it. That would be the intent of the tares. The intent of the wheat would be to make sure that you find out how to get your salvation, okay? And the whole concept that people don't understand is the way to the salvation is to have a pure way, meaning it's a way that does not mix any other spirituality with it, okay? Cain is the one that would be, you know, this is why you're going to get people say, oh, these stories are all made up, fabricated. This is how this happened. Because the whole concept is in order to stop the wheat from getting what they need, you need to send them in different directions, following the wrong shepherd. Okay. This is the whole concept of why people don't understand Lucifer was literally a tree that they weren't supposed to eat. And, and Fumuyisu Kuswakongo was literally a tree that they were supposed to eat. So he was there from the beginning, okay? Um, that's why he referred to himself so much as a tree in his metaphors when he was talking to his people. Now, who are his people? This is the problem that the world doesn't understand. The whole concept, and I'm gonna do this real quick, for all that you are and what you do in this time continue to help restore the knowledge and the wisdom to our people for those that are bringing more and more stuff out we continue to help our people to grow and to learn and to mature as the wheat are supposed to for those that have been misconstrued or mis uh, misled, we ask Tatanzambi that their eyes will become open more and more in the spiritual understanding and to realize that there is indeed a great deception that has been continuing to go upon the world for those who want to continue to believe the lies of the wealthy and, the, and those who have a sinister objective. We ask that you continue to expose these things. Matone Masakaze for once again, um, and we ask Tatanzami that we continue to do the work of the Most High in all our ways. We honor Kuswa Kongo from Uyisu Kuswa Kongo. We honor the Monavelana. We honor, honor um, all of our righteous Unkuluntu out down to Tata Adama Mama Eva. We honor all of our Asalama Maliki Makongo. Kimbo, hallelujah. Um, so as I was talking, the scriptures give hints that there's obviously going to be a 
masquerade going on. The masquerade is there's a false messiah. Okay. The whole concept, when you go to, like I talked about in 2 Colinto, Paola, when he says that the, the devil masquerades as an angel of light, uh, if anybody comes teaching you know, the Messiah that we did not preach, you're going to go with them. If um, that, that the devil has ministers, okay? So when it comes to the concept of teaching the truth and teaching the lie, you know, there's people who actually talk about where the word pastor comes from and everything like that. The biggest delusion that people don't understand is everything that has been taught to many of the Christians, especially in America and in Europe, is mostly in the English language, which is the language that the Creator did not speak. Okay. The other part is not understanding Rome. People want to say that Rome was created to spread the word of God. No. That's the lie. That's what Lucifer is going to tell you. Rome's intent was always about conquering or dominion. That's why there's even a college called Old Dominion. Domination or dominion is the concept of conquering people and being on top. Okay. They did not take our scrolls for the purpose of spreading the gospel. If you really look at the history of the Roman Empire and Constantine and all the other pre and um, uh, what's his name and Nero and uh, Caligula and uh, the Flavian Empire and um, you know uh, the other uh, the popes, what was their whole motivation of why they had these scriptures? Is about what? Was it to educate the people about the word of God? If that were true, they would have let them read it. Let's, top of, let's think about that. Or was it to be able to control what you think? Okay. So when you consider the concept of religion, religion is about telling you what to think, not teaching you what to know. Let's think, let's understand that. Um, who is like that? The Most High or the Lucifer? The Most High is about teaching his children the way that they should live. The devil is about domination, control. I, I don't want, I want to conquer. Okay. So when you look at these two concepts, you're going to say then that the mentality of the wheat is about teaching and understanding and making sure people are following. The, the concept of the tears is you do as I say, and you don't deviate, and you're going to make sure, like I said, the whole condemnation thing. It's about dominion, dom domination, old dominion. The, the real translation of old dominion is Lucifer, because he's the one that wants to be of domination. Okay, so when we understand this concept of domination, and I'll share my screen here in a minute, domination is going to also be connected to the concept of worship in, an, in a different way than what the creator has intended. Okay, of course, we know now from our teaching, Malachi, sacrifice, okay, from teachings that have been done from others, um, it's about the way the Most High wants his sacrifice versus the way the devil wants his sacrifice. The, the Most High of truth, his sacrifice comes from the concept he is never dead, he's always living. It's all about mostly um, just being in the proper balance and obedience to the law, statutes, and commandments that he has, had, has um, given. The devil's sacrifice is about control and is about making him alive because he's dead. He's a dead God. Nothing in him is, is like you said, he's a, he's a, he's a, a black hole it's in essence. He, he, he's full of darkness, no light. 
but it has a but it creates a false light. The Most High is about all light, nothing bad. Okay. So when we understand these two concepts, it's going to make it clear that there is a strong delusion about people who don't even know that when you look at the people who run the world, are they about teaching or about domination? Then who is their God? Because if they wanted you to know, if they wanted you to think, if they wanted you to understand, you would have a total different society than what you see being run today. Okay, what is the concept of secrecy so that you don't know that you're being manipulated in ways that you don't understand? What is the what is the most high say? He wants to reveal his secrets to those who love him so that they will have what? A relationship with the creation, a relationship with the father and in balance with everything that he has created. Okay. Now, when we talk about the supercontinent that they covered up, okay, what would be the concept when we talk about the scriptures say, gird your loins with truth, which would be the center, okay? In the supercontinent, the center would have been where? As we shown the pictures. Okay, I'll show that again. Let me share my screen. Now, of course, there's different variations. People want to say this isn't always the right one, but it's close to the understanding. So, first of all, one of the things we know about the creator of the Abana Saka Yukili Abraham and Jacob, he is all against idol, idol worship. Lusambu ya biteki, Lusambu ya biteki, idol worship. Okay. Well, even say during the time of the judges, the Israelites repeatedly fell away to idolatry. Nantangu ya bazuzi. There's in Bazuzi, Zuzi means judge, which is what the even, and I'm going to tell you how you can tell this is a word that was stolen by Esau. We, they call him Unzuza when it calls about judges in the Hebrew language. So Bazuzi means judge, is also a Hebrew word. So you see that there is a correlation there. Maba Mbala Mingi Bantu Ya Israeli, Israeli. Vandaka, remember the L is an R, R is an L. Isala Eli, that's how we say that. Vandaka Kubwa Nalusambu Ya Biteki. Okay, so what was the always the part with the Most High's people? They fell away to idolatry. Now, when we look at his law, statutes, and commandments, Idolatry was considered a Gentile or pagan way. Lamelia Jeremiah verse 10. Also, Masindisi in Mukuso Congo, he also said, I am against idolatry as well. How do we know that? Because he told the Sanhedrin, You teach the children to disobey the father's law, which means if you're disobeying his law, you are now idolizing Lucifer. Okay, no one understands this concept. If you're teaching the Most High's children to disobey the Most High's law, you're making them lawless. So now their idol is Lucifer, is Baal. So he was against idolatry as well. He also said so in Revelations. Revelations 1, he tells you, he said, I hate the Nicolaitans. Why? They're sacrificing unto idols. I hate this woman, Jezebel. He makes my people go and do sacrifice unto idol that they commit sexual acts. So the problem is, is that Yisway, or Jesus, I'm going to say Jesus, which is really, Jesus was really the sorcerer, but we're going to get into that. So um, the concept is the sorcerer wants to 
being an idol, wants to be worshipped like an idol. Okay. Mascendency himself said, you don't, it's, it's not me, but the father. Now, is he worthy of honor and worthy of what he is as a high priest? Yes. But he says, all praise goes, it goes to the most high. That's what hallelujah means. It doesn't say hallelujah, 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 the most high. Okay. This is the understanding why the most high said a reprobated minded person is going to put the creation above the creator. Loma 1, 18 through 32. Romans. Okay. Why is the world in the chaos that it's in? Because they're not telling you for the people who run the world who are themselves idol worshipers that let's take hide this that you are actually worshiping the creation and not the creator so everything that you do in this world will be the opposite of what is actually tolerated by the creator this it was back to isaiah chapter 2 when he said don't forgive people that bow down to idols but then they'll turn around and say, no, Fumo Yusu said you're supposed to forgive your brother 77. Seven. Here's what you don't understand. That's when they talk about if they return. Because if you go, it says if you if they don't, if they don't return, if they don't come back from their um uh if they don't come back from their wicked ways, then you rebuke them. People don't understand the concept that he came and he said, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. I would I came to separate the people who love my father from those who hate my father from idol worship. Okay, that's why he was upset with the Sanhedrin who were making the people worship idols, just like what happened with the Greeks. What happened in every captivity, we were bowing down to idols. Okay. This is important because now the world has been made to believe, oh, the Old Testament says it wasn't okay to bow down to idols. Oh, but the Mascendency says, oh, the law has been done away with. We can now bow down to idols. No, he did not say that. You're not reading. He never said it was okay to bow down to idols. None of these scriptures have ever really actually said that. However, they are implying that it would be okay, especially through some of the teachings of Paul, and even he didn't say that. But the sorcerer is the one that's going to twist the words to make you think that there wasn't a problem with idol worship. Okay? Now, why do we say Congo? Well, let's talk about it. One of the things that we were told to do was gird our loins with truth. How did we do that? We put a red sash around our stomach. Now, here's how you can tell that someone was copycatting. When you look at the Roman Catholic Church, many of their priests wear the red, the red, the red around their stomach. When you look at the history of colonization and you saw the people who wear white with red sashes around in uh, Spain, South, in the colonizers in South America and Mexico and even in the Philippines, you would see this a common thing with the red sash. But then, oh, where would you also see this? With, with the US military. And when you see what the US military, even in the days when they first started, they were all about moral standards, which incorporated the Ten Commandments, which is why even today you can get charged for adultery. You can get charged for stealing in a different way than you see with the regular courts. You can get you can get charged with things that are actually like the Ten Commandments, even though in the military they're actually doing a lot of hypocrisy, which is always how it works. Okay. And it goes back to um, how many people don't get the cop, like even the cowboys. The cowboys were black, the cow hands were white. What did the cowboys work that they see in the movies? A red sash. 
So then you would also see this, like I showed you, in the military, they're, the people now are understanding that learned this, and I thank our brother Chiba for this, that Kagor and others who talked about it means the center. And if you put the nails up back, you get Conger, which I actually knew that person. You know, may he be, you know, he, right, he passed away, unfortunately. I'm so sorry for that. Um, but he, I grew up with a person who had that name. You take the R off of his name, you get Conga, which is similar to when you get Congo. So you had Jewish people with the name Conga or Kagor, okay, which would mean the center. That's why when you now go around the world, you see people who incorporated the name Kong, Viet Cong, Hong Kong, Okay, why are they not saying the O? Because they know what, what that's the connection is Congo from the historical. This is where because many of the European colonizers knew that word was common in other people's languages and they wouldn't let them say it. It was an off limits word. You can say Hong Kong, but you cannot say Congo. Okay, why can't you say the O? Because remember, when you talk about who ran, who was really in charge of colonization, Rome was still connected to the Khazars, as well as Judaism. Okay, we talk about the three frogs. Like we say, Rome was not designed to spread the word of God. Even you, if you think I'm lying to you, go ask the Eastern Orthodox churches who were arguing with them when they broke apart and they had the schism. Why did that happen? Because that's not what they were doing. The Eastern Orthodox churches understood that they needed to go feed the lost sheep. Rome was like, no way, if you feed the lost sheep, we, we're we done. People understand this concept. This is how they know. And the infiltration of Gog. No, they said because they understood even then, if you feed the lost sheep, our God, Lucifer, is over. Because now the world will actually do what the Most High wants. And they will learn how to get away from the paganism completely, which is what is the whole point of what the Most High was doing with his people. The concept of teaching his way was to eradicate paganism, which started through the lineage of who? Canaan, the Hamitic tribes, for those of us who have you know, studied the fact that um, the first curse, for those who know the other scriptures say in Samu and Yapeta were together. They were the ones that did not laugh at their father and covered his nakedness while Ham, Kama, and he read the curse. So that curse brings back what? Paganism, Canaan, he's cursed. They start coming in and incorporating the, uh, demonic energy. The children start to worship idols like what happened with Cain. Yapeta adopts these things because if you even go and you see the equivalencies of the, the children of Gomer and Magog and Yog, they have these equivalencies of these Hamitic gods with different names because even the Phoenicians adopted Canaanite gods. Okay, so we know Lucifer comes into the scene to the Hamitic tribes, which is where you're going to get people saying, oh, oh, this is what caused the black people to get cursed. <laughs> like, No, the curse of Cain was the opposite. He was leper Cain. That's where you get leprechaun from. This is why, that's how Lucifer wants to trick the world because he understands this concept. Like in the days of Noah was where the less melanated people dominated the darker melanated people. He knows this when we mixed with Cain. That's why they want to teach you, no, Seth's lion was white. No, Seth's lion was melanated. But they don't want to tell you that because it's like the days of Noka. The people who are cursed should be on top. The people who are not cursed are supposed to be on the bottom. But you're going to think the other way around when it comes to complexion. Okay. Now you have the different 
um, spectrums of it. But the bottom line is, it's it's really, it's really black and white, just different you know spectrums or whatever. Because the, what they don't tell you is the majority of the world, two hundred years ago, was dark. <laughs> They're not telling you that. Why would they not want to tell you? Because then it exposes the lie. Then you have to say the people who were dark had to come from darker regions of the world. If this is going to be the true Bantu people, the true Israelites. Now, the problem with they saying where Canaan was is the concept that Ham did not give his son that small of a piece of land when it comes into comparison to the brothers. Cush had a lot of land, Kemet had a lot of land, Puti had a lot of land. Why would Canaan only have a sliver? This, this is the whole concept that they're not talking about and how his father was distributing the, pro, the land among the brothers, okay? The next part is there was a boundary between that land and the land of, of Japheth, Yapeta, because in Semu, as they try to reverse it now, <laughs> it was really North America, part of uh, um, Africa when it was combined, okay? But part of, but some, but some of the defendants of his children were, were, were given the land of Canaan, of the Hamitic tribes, which they thought wasn't white, but they pointed, the curse said that they would serve his lineage and the other brothers, okay? So now, when we talk about uh, these scriptures about idol worship, we're going to go to Baluk, Baluki. See, Baruch, if you go and you do the Baluka, that means blessing in Bantu language. Baluka, let me just show you. Blessings. Okay. La Sukumunu, or it's also, they would say Baluki or Baluka. Okay. Uh, let's put, let me put the Kikongo word. Or Bilaka, Baluka. Change, or well, it really means, they say Baluki, but it also means bless. So, um, because some some Kikongo words, they have two different meanings. So it's like we said, we will march on the king's lawn without turning to the right or to the left because of to the territory. Beto, Beto is actually the name of a, the name people use in Spanish. Taluta nanzila ya in totila. This is where you, you want to know this is where you get the word tortilla from, is tortilla. People don't even know that. Betuta baluka de na diboko kitata to yakimama ti ti i kunabeto la luta na territoire territoire nangai nangai, okay. You know, that's one of the things they talk about. So Baluka, or we could say Bilaka, Bilaka promises, which is also considered, you know, blessings. So now when we're reading, he's saying we're in the going to the historical setting. Uh, now these are the sons of the scroll of Beluk Baluki, son of Neria, Nelia, this would be Nelia, Mwana Mahesea. See, this is almost like Messiah. See, Mahesea, son of Zedekiah, son of Hasadiah, son of Hilikia, wrote in Babylon in the fifth year on the seventh day of the month at the time of the Chaldeans took Salama and destroyed it with fire. Now, why would this happen? We were once again doing what? <laughs> Falling into idol worship. Baluka read the words of this scroll and the hearing of Yokina, 
son of Jehoiakim, king of Yaounde, and all of the people who came to the reading of the noble king's son elders and all the people small and great, and all who lived in Babylon in the river Sud. <coughs> they rep, fasted, and prayed to the Fumu and collected such funds, and each could afford. Now, we're going to get back to the concept. We say, why Congo? How can this be? We go back even to the letter that was sent by Leopold the Great, who said, you don't need to teach these people the most high. They know him. They know the God. Well, where are the people located who call the creator in zombie that already know him? Oh, they just happen to be in the Congo. So then the land also represents the people or by the name, the Bakongo, the Bena, the Bena Congo. So then that must mean they must be sons of Congo, children of Congo. That's the whole concept why identity is significant because that's why it's such a lot of attacks. Because the people who are benefiting in this world understand the concept that, that we must keep those who are not never supposed to benefit again unless we say so, okay, and control what people think and what they know in order to maintain the control, dominion, dominance over others. So like I said, if you're living in a world where you have a group of people that are being dominant over another, that is not the most highest way. And so we're going to go back to how do these people live when they were the bottom, okay? This is how you can talk about whose God is whom. The most high, the true God of Abana Sakyuk, he said, I am a jealous God, but I'm also a generous God. We go to Hosea. Chapter two, he talks about how he gives his wife and his children more than what they need, what they, you know, what they need. And he's very generous with, you know, his blessings. What was the situation with many of the people who lived in the other civilizations? How did it work? Well, when they were living in caves or when they were living in huts or when they were living in off the land, it was what? You got to catch what you eat. Okay. Survival of the fittest. They, they were, how do you know dominance was part of it? Because when we look at what happened, when they talk about the book of Bonaris, as well as uh, Philippi, they says, what tree did represent Lucifer's mentality was animal. How do animals function? They dominate. So this is when, you go to the concept of uh, how Kaina thought, like the animals, I am going to control them and have dominion, not have the same. He, it wasn't like how Adama was, where it was a relationship. It was about control, power. I can defeat you mentality. That's why it became competition. Competition was all about survival. The first one who gets it gets, you know, that's the whole concept. Was this the mentality that was being taught to the Most High and the chosen people? No. So therefore, the whole concept of the devil is, I am going to make you compete and see who's the best. It's all a game. It's a competition. That's not the most high's way. If you really read the scriptures and he talks about his people, he says, I am willing to share all of what I have because I never run out with those that I love. Okay. That's why he says, those who keep their ear from hearing the law, his, their prayers are an abomination when we read this scripture in Proverbs. Okay. And then we know that the word was in Proverbs. But the concept is when we look at this, it says, and I'm see, I'm going to talk about how, and I meant to talk about this in my teaching, is how do you now, because how you have canceled your salvation is through donating to the wrong source. See, 
many people are going to find out in these churches, in these temples of Baal, one of the ways that this is why you can't have conversations with people that still have a churchianity mindset is because the money exchange is actually a contract, not just with the pastor, but with the church itself. What they fail to understand is, like I said, there's only the seven churches. There never, there never were any more. Everybody else, is, they're just a denomination of these churches, and Rome was the church of Laodicea. The other six churches represented the Eastern Orthodox bishops. But Rome also incorporated some of Philadelphia, and that's the whole concept is when you look at the Council of Nicaea, okay, the Church of Laodicea is affiliated with this with these people with this concept. That's why we know how do we know this? Because the word Canaan, like I told you, comes from the word Canaan. And they lied about it. So this is Gog. This is also affiliated with not with the Canaanites. This is also affiliated with um the corporation, because like I told you, the Etruscans, we look at what happened with the Hittites, they moved up to, into that region. They were Canaanite descendants, okay? This is the whole concept where the Most High was getting angry because people were going into each other's territories that he said the brothers were not supposed to cross, okay? So this is what made Rome already a cursed civilization when they were going out there to conquer people and bring them under their rule, just like how Greece was doing before, Persia, Babylon, all these different Egypt, 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 same way. They were looking for world dominance and power and all the time that they lived. But people aren't aware of the fact that this was considered a no-no to the creator. Okay? And that was the whole big deal that they covered this up. Each person was to stay in their own uh, area. <laughs> okay. And that's why when they go and encounter other people, they would be doing that. They're like, we're not supposed to be over here. We're going to defend this. Okay. At least not to try to take it. And visiting was one thing, but taking it over, you know, that was part of the problem. Um, it says they wept, fasted, and prayed before the informer and collected such funds as each could afford that they sent to Solomon to Joachim, the priest. This is Gangan Zambi, son of Hilkia, son of Salim, Kohanim. Remember, I told you, Kohanim is a Hittite word for their priests. It was actually, that's how Gog incorporated it. That had nothing to do with our way. But anyway, Lord, I digress to this. Um, at the same time, he received the vessels of the house of Fumu that had been removed from the temple to restore them to the land of Judah on the 10th Sivan. The silver vessel, Sedekiah, Sedekiah, Hosea, Consul, Yunda. Now, this Sivan, this was incorporated. This is not our word. This is a Babylonian word. This is how you can tell it was being incorporated already because Sivan was a, a Babylonian month. The silver vessel of Zedekiah, son of Yosea, king of Yunda, had made after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, carried off captive to Yokina. And the princes, the skill workers, the nobles, and the people of the land form Solomon and brought them to Babylon. Now, I'm going to show you where part of this is kind of a delusion. Because when this time was going on, Egypt and Babylon were still fighting over the land, you know, so Palestine. And there were wars going on there. And they covered this up in the history books. So we were not there. Now, we had begun to move up there because of what happened with um, Solomon building the temple in Moabi, which we now know really was hitting the fact that it was in Africa. And the Moabites got kicked out every year. They always ran out of, out of Africa to get away from the from the kicking the butt kicking is the most high was doing but um the concept is when Solomon built the temple 
the Egyptians still occupied the land that they were fighting between the Hittites and the Babylonians. The Philistines, who were really the Hermetic tribes, were in the land where the Cushites were. Palestine came about through the Arabs. Now, where were the Arabs? They were in Persia. And they were the sons of, they were more the sons of Ensemu because they came from Ismaili and then they would soon become incorporated with the Edomites who also were running out of, out of, out of, Egypt, out of Africa. The actual place where you're now showing Edom here in this picture, like I said, here's Pangea, which is really uh, Embo. You see where the center would be of this landmass right here. Okay, this is where they would be. That's why they don't want to tell people about the whole, they want to make this so old and uh, evolution and everything because the concept is when you put this into the context of the scripture's timeline, which is still longer than what they put, okay, when you put it into the context, now you have to say, well, where is the Garden of Eden? Uh, well, this is what they want to say. Oh, well, we found Adam and stuff in North America, so it must have been over here. Oh, yeah. When they don't understand, Adama actually he traveled to different places, but he was always around this region. He put it, they, that's when they found, you know, they say they found his down here was his, um, when he traveled away, he had his, his time, his clock. That they, they, they followed, and so they said this would be in this region and to the east, okay, to the east of where if it's one continent, the east would be this way, <laughs> okay, the east of the whole con of Embo to the east, so it, it'd be the east of there. So, this is why it would be here, it would not be up here because it, this land doesn't exist yet. That's why they don't want to rewrite the scriptures to or change. Why did why do you think they changed the maps after the breaking apart to incorporate the Middle East right here? So if you if you don't specify that when Pele, that's what the word that's why they coded it through the player Pele, because Pele was actually dark, <laughs> the, the, the soccer player. Okay. When you go to Pele and they talk about the division of the land, they say, oh, well, that was just the people just divided. No, there was a physical movement of continents and part of it was because of Nimrod. The Most High was ticked off with Nimrod because what he did was he took all of the tribes and brought them together and put the stupid tower right here, okay? That's why they don't want to tell you the sun god was right. His This is what caught, see, the Sahara Desert was created because he refused to quit messing around with the other tribes to keep bringing them back to be under his rule because he was trying to replace the line of Ensemo as the lineage that people should follow. He cut off, he didn't want to be, the Most High cut him off, so he wanted to cut off that lineage because of the things that he was doing, okay? That's why he wanted to kill uh, Adama, Abraham, because he would replace him, and he didn't want that. Lucifer was like, no, we cannot have this lineage. That's why to even specify that the righteous lineage comes through the Bakongo people, the Ben Ansami, the Ben Isolde, why are they fighting that so much? Because the devil never wanted this lineage to exist. He did everything to try to destroy it. How do we know? Well, how many times did we get kicked out of our land? Who was behind that? He wanted to erase. That's why he went through all the trouble of trying to fight Mesindisi and try to kill him. No, I don't want Then, Then you're going to defeat. He wanted to make sure that the lineage and the bloodline was eradicated. That's why it was important 
that when Rome took over, that that was actually the role that they were meant to play was to delete the lineage and become the representative, the representation. And that was working in cahoots with Judah, the, 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 the Khazars, the Gog, even though they weren't necessarily worshiping the same way, it was still about doing what? The whole purpose of Lucifer and his deception with Islam is once again, I am trying to erase the proper connection to the inheritance. That was the point. And then the other, and of course, the whole purpose of why they wanted to erase the name to the other places that knew it is because we were going to be scattered throughout the earth when we were taken into captivity for the people who know what the word Congo meant. So then the, the colonizers had to make sure that any reference to this name had to be eradicated so that people wouldn't know that the Bakongo people, the Benanzang, the Bene Isolele, are in fact the lineage. Okay? This is the whole concept because it's like we say, words are vibration, language is vibration. The Kikongo language vibrates differently for the people who know that there's a connection that people don't even know about. That's why when people talk about people, I don't know no Kong, I don't know. Okay, there's a reason for that because they wanted to make sure that the identity remained with Cain, with those in, in who, Cain, who Cain was using. That's why it was, you know, when people say, oh, we're the army of God. I'm like, do you even know who the army of God is? Go to Ezekiel 37, it'll point it right out, okay? He never put any heathen, pagans. I mean, there was, well, I can't say that he didn't. He did have, we did have connections to other people, but rarely would you have a complete other nation fighting in the army of Davidi, which is who that army of God was, Tatanzambi. Because Davidi had an army, and that army was always uh, based on the people who had given assigned those positions. That's why Naphtali was very much a part of that. Okay, and Gada. Um, because each tribe was given, you don't understand that each tribe was given a specific a specific task for making it one nation. You know the. Uh, Magdana had a had a had a had a, uh, a position, and then it was passed to Ephraim. Ephraim, um, it was Yosefu. It was they had a they had a they had a um a specific task, you know. That's why when people are talking about, oh yeah, we used to make the rope, you know. When I was talking about the brother from Uganda, we used to make the rope for the kings, you know. Each clan or in Kanda or group had a specific, uh, that's why their totem was affiliated with what they do, okay? And that's why Biawunde, Judah, would become the lion for Simba because of when the fact that um, Yakubi held on to the heel, Yakobo, Yakubi means to hold the seat, hold the heel, or it's what is in Simba, and became a Swahili word for lion. Why did they hide that? Because then if you know the word in Simba means lion, then you know who who said this word. Bound to people. See, they don't tell you, uh, they're going to say, oh, the Hebrew word for lion is this. Okay, if we go, let's see, Hebrew word for lion. Arye, okay, Alie, or Ke Alie, they'll say, oh, that's the word for lion, okay, 
So then we look at the etymology. Al ye. So we go to R ye. And we'll see. It's going to say Aramaic, right? Remember, the Assyrians spoke Aramaic, and that's where the Phoenicians primarily were. See, it says Syriac. Remember, I talk about the fact that in the 700, uh, when Ashkenaz and them were still a nation, they were located in the land of Assyria. Okay. Now watch this. It's going to tell you Arye, the Hebrew name Arye occurs only once in the Bible. Arye is a guard who was killed among, along with King Pekiah of Isolele and a fellow guard named Argob, the assassin's name Peka, a loyal who by 50 men Gilead. Okay, so now we have a problem. Now, the first two and the last two E's of there are related to the Ari. I actually had a roommate with that name, <laughs> and Ari was his name. Ari and variants of both mean lion, but in the Leabel, which is the same, which is the diminutive. Hold on. What is the relationship? All right, fine. I'll accept the cookies. Now it's going to tell you, watch this. What is the relationship with the following the names that often go together with the same combination? Arli, Ari, Arye, Yahudi, Leah, Leabel. Now this right here is a fallen angel. I'm going to tell you that right now. I've encountered many men, young and old, with the following first name come this as Arye, Leab, Yahuda, Yahuda, Al, Al, Ari, Yahuda Arye, and I know one person's name, Ari, but but I also know of the Holocaust survivor English name were Leo and Leon. And this is incorporated into there too when Leo is technically Nimrod. Okay. And this is where Leon really comes from, like Sierra Leone. Leon, Sierra Leone comes from the name of Cush, Cushite, the Cushite Nimrod. Okay. The first two in Atlanta, they actually to Ari are variants of the both mean lion and the same diminutive added to the crate. Now, here's the problem. We literally have a word context that say in Simba Wayuda. And we know that in our language, we gave the name of Yakubi Simba. Well, how do you know we're not lying to you? Well, they make a movie called The Lion King. When people don't understand what the word Mufasa means like the most high, Scar is really the imposter, and then Simba is the real king. So this is where they're throwing it in your face. And where was he born in the movie? In Africa. <laughs> to show you even in southern Africa, in, in that region. Okay. And they were showing you Mount Sioni actually in the movie. <laughs> but they ain't going to tell you that. Okay. So now you're saying that that's the whole concept. In Bantu language, we have a name for Jacob as in Simba. And then in Simba, Wayuda, it means the Lion of Judah. So you know that this word is more affiliated. I mean, let's go look at it. This we can see if we can catch the thief on this. The Phoenician. Sorry, my, my spelling isn't great. Phoenician word 
or lion. Let's see if we can get it. Well, let's see if they'll tell me. This is an A. This is the olive. You know what that letter is if you go to the to the Phoenician alphabet. Watch this. The Arya is already going to pop up in this. Let's see what that letter is. I keep trying to tell people this is Phoenician. It's not Hebrew. It's not the really okay. So we're going to go to the language. When we look at, there's your R. Let's go look at it. <laughs> See, this is going to show you they're lying. So this is the word. They're spelling it in Phoenician. Ab, Aleph. And then the, the letter. Resh. And then you have the Ye. Which is which is that this one, wa, away, or or arne? See our way, our way. What is the way? See that one? Which they got from us was his ve, okay? Yave. See that what I'm just telling you? Now look what they just showed you. What is the Lord for language in arye? Is the language in the Phoenician word for lion? So it didn't come from. See there? This is how you say Arye in Phoenician. So guess what? In Simba, Arye is the Phoenician word. Is the Phoenician word. Okay. So let's talk about this. So Toko himself said, loss of purity in the church. Actually, he says, this is what he's talking about. He said, we have, and this is back in 1974. He said, we have been fighting for the liberation of the church for 25 years. Why is he saying that? Because he knew even at the time that he was walking that Rome and even the Protestant churches, they were not, they, you have to understand, Protestantism had an, an alternative motive. What was really it about? a land grab, an expansion of the European uh, land to other regions. This is where the whole concept, when you go and you see how the lands were transformed from, from European, the land we used to call Europe now, and then you go to now um, America and North America, South America, you go to the um, China, who was under the British, the Vietnamese, French. Uh, you go under the Spanish Azores. Okay, you go under the Azores. Well, they're part of that already. You go to the Caribbean. You go to the um, East Indies, the, how the British controlled Australia and they controlled India. What was religion really used for? Land acquisition. You think they were, oh, no, we're spreading the word of God. Through what means? It was all done through what? Killing of the inhabitants that were there or controlling them. Domination. Okay? That is not the most, the mo when we go back to the Messiah, he said, I'm not, he said, he even said, when they disrespected him, do you want us to kill these people? No, I'm not here for that. We're here to teach the Most High's way. And then he told his Abba, the Balangoki, if they don't accept you, shake your sandals and walk away. Did he say go cut them down and hit them with a sword? Uh, no. <laughs> he just said they'll get their judgment when the time come. Okay. This is how you know the spiritual deception of the Zeus and Jupiter, who is Lucifer, was incorporated in the mentality of the pagan. And the, because when they went to go and incorporate, well, look at, all you gotta do is look at what happened with Nero. 
and what happened with the other emperors when they were not willing to accept how they wanted things done, there was bloodshed always. Okay. And this is what we understand. And this and this bloodshed was coming through the fact that the Most High himself was allowing people to be punished for what they had even done to our land because the Romans had to pay the price for taking down our kingdom. But at the same time, it was because he, that he had already sent them to do it. Okay. So here we go. Again, this is the whole catching the thief thing. Arye is a Phoenician word. <laughs> this is how they're saying it. Okay, so then he says, they heard that I was called by the president in Lisbon, and where they stayed, they thought Simone was already killed. Because this is when they, he, they took his heart out, and he got up, and then he asked for it back. That's why they thought he was dead. And he woke up. The reason for my trip to Lisbon, it was President Antonio Spinola who called us. I didn't ask to go there. Many were called in Rwanda, but some denied it, and Neto is also denied it. And he said, I will not. Uh, let's see. I will not. It's kind of cut off. I will not. I guess we'll just say, I will not. Then we go, it says, Senor Spinola used to say, looking at Angola, which people don't understand the word Angola. It literally means dispersed ones. It's a, it's a Hebrew word. It's a, it's a Bantu word that means that. Where the word Gola, I mean, that's why they really got the word gold from, which is a little bit, that's another spirit. It's, it's gold was another name of a Canaanite god. We do not see anyone else who can take the country because of others run Angola, they will destroy it. So, so for that not happen, the only person trusted we find Mr. Simao, and he said to him, "No, there were those who look up, who took up arms for nine years. It is best that the country must be given." Ah, uh, but that doesn't work. Now, remember one of the things that was always, um, and this is why we tell people, how do you really work for the Most High? And this is how you know the Gentile mentality is this is all about survival. Which is why they say they have twisted the scripture by say, oh, you must work for a living if you want to get paid. But they're doing it in what way? Competition for jobs. Just to show you how deceived you are and how much you think that you're not being enslaved by this system. I'm going to show you. Well, on the time that Toko was uh, walking, what was the minimum wage in America? Can't spell it, me. Jeez. Sorry. And I, oh, I forgot the first I. Because, like, what the heck? Now this is, I'm going to go 1974 US. Watch this. The minimum wage, people don't even know. This is almost like slavery. I ain't gonna lie to you. If you're working, if you're working at a restaurant in 1974, watch this. Uh, let's see, 1960. Now watch. Let me go through the 60s alone. The 1960s amendments greatly expanded the FLCS scope that the retail sector increased the minimum from previous covered workers to one dollar and 15 cents an hour effective in September 1961 and to $1.25 an hour in 1963. Now, I want you to put this into perspective when you look at, I know there was a difference in, you know, economy and the way things were being spent, but it's like, look, think about that. You know, people... We've just now, listen, when you go to minimum wage, uh, minimum, I can't spell it, wage 2024, OK? 
Okay. Now, today, the minimum wage is, now look at this. Look at the variations, okay? You still have it down in Alabama. Uh, Alabama, the federal, I don't know what the, Federal Department of Labor, Georgia, look at Georgia. The South, it got, look at this, Idaho. Look at these places that the minimum wage in Louisiana. Now, let's look at the, when you look at that, Let's look at the cost of living in America, right? cost of living. And because they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, we do by cost of living. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, let's go cost of living, 1974. And they talk about living. So when we go to, let's see, even then we had the oil crisis because people were lining up at the pump. So it's like, when you look at the cost of living, and I kept trying to tell people, you think you're not in the slave, you're not in the slave system working like a donkey? You have been deceived, boy. Because see, when you look at the way Tatanzambi's kingdom, okay, <sighs> When he was ruling, he would this would be blown out of the water when it comes to the people who would have wealth. You had kingdoms in Africa that would embarrass America's concept of how people were taken care of during that time, because I told you this is all about payback. You don't for the people who were on the bottom, Anansi. They know this. They're they're making they're making you suffer, and it's a laugh. It's laughable, on how people think that this is all a blessing. Are you kidding me? And remember how Tatanzami said, "For my work, everybody gets paid. You know, according to their work. And I'm not going to shaft. You're gonna you're gonna have a a really good payout. It's not going to be something where you're going to be like." Oh yeah, how do, are you serious? How, how can I survive off of this? That's not going to be part of the issue with him. You inherit in a kingdom, land, massive, you know, lots of land. His his brings about land, uh, animals, uh, agriculture, gold, um, silver. I mean, you know, minerals. You, you don't get it. We had it. We had it made. That's why they're saying Africa was the richest continent. You know why it was the richest continent? Because the blessing of the Tantu people was there. When we stepped the foot, woo, the land changes. That's why people could tell. They knew where we were whenever we found us in different places because the, the wealth of the land increased. Okay. So you look at the cost of living alone. Uh, let's see, where is it? See how they say in 45 cents, the equivalent of $7 in our time back in the thirties. Uh, let's go to the seventies. And they're gonna keep telling you, oh yeah, we you see, and then they talk about how they really you know, people don't even know what unions really were about. <laughs> it's a lot more of deception than you know, and that's why the reason why they treat them, they treated people in unions so bad is because, like I told you, to the people who run the run the companies, you are goyim, you are sheep. Okay, so they're saying, oh, the sheep are acting to be treated better, uh, but they're sheep. We don't care. We, no, we have to negotiate because why do you think it's all about the profit margin? The people on stop are making, yeah, it's our company, so we get to determine how much people make. The most high is like, see, the, and that's how you can tell their God is Lucifer because the creator is like, the least you give me, go back to what Masindisi said, you will have greater. Not the more that you have, the least that you have. 
in the Most High's kingdom. It's the complete opposite. It's a lie. They, they're tricking people. This is how you know the wrong God is running the running the system. This is how it's bail. And see, through this concept, and what people don't understand is, by you continuing to learn a contradiction to what the scriptures, even if you read them closely, say, that means you are being rejected for your salvation because your God is not the most high. Your God is Lucifer. And that's why when you talk about the secret societies and what they did, that was their job was to put the tares so you lose your salvation. Why do you think there's an obelisk in Washington, D.C. that was, was, was connected to the Hamitic gods? Okay. That's going to cause you to be kicked out of the kingdom, not have it. That's why they don't tell you what the steeple on the churches are. And they're going to sit there and tell you that's not true. Okay. You're always being, see, as a pagan, when you mix paganism with non-paganism, because like I said, these people don't care about you. They just want to sit there and take advantage of the people that they that they hated. Like they said, they, it was a curse for the pale skin and the, and the law. And so that's why they didn't really care for white people. And then they used them for their purpose of getting wealthy through the religions that were being incorporated, even through Islam. That's why they were fighting over. It was always, see, the fights, the fights that your people understand is why was Christianity really fighting Islam? Oh, it was about belief. No. Go back and look at the Crusades. It was about the wealth of the 12 tribes how did you that's what and that's why judah was in it the judaism was in there it was all about those three religions fighting over what and then who controls now who controls it who controls the wealth of solomon jacob or esau oh they'll say oh well jacob does because he's the no those are the people you don't even know jacob does not have the, the controlling interest anymore because he gave it away Okay. Looking at Angola, so it says, ah, but these do not work. And so, like I said, they would put him to work to say, you need to go break rocks. You need to go. That's, you're not working just singing and praying. And it's like, do you know what the most high work is? It's like they didn't understand that. No, you need to be like the, the Flintstones going, go crack, crack rocks. And this is what they were talking about. The sister that even said there were tribes that were actually dressed that way when she saw that. Now on my return from Lisbon, they're accusing that Samal is a traitor to the people. Read the document and see that made to go to Lisbon. Portuguese, it says, Dear Simone, except the President of the Republic instructs me to invite your accent to assist the meeting with several persons from Angola. See, he was meeting with government officials to be held in Lisbon the 26th of the month when he asked him to preside. Now, why do you think he's meeting with these government officials and they don't know nothing about it over here in America? No, because the CIA was like, ain't no way we're going to tell people about this dude. You know why they didn't want to tell people about this guy over in America? You would have destroyed the civil rights movement. King would have been an embarrassment to compared to what Toko was doing. I'm telling you, Malcolm, would have, he would have been embarrassed. Because the way he handled himself in the country of Angola, well, those laws were a lot more crazier than they have in America. And what he was able to accomplish with the, what was going on with the war that was tearing the country apart, with what was going on with the Portuguese and what was going on with the French and the Congo and all these different things at that time. You see, it was all proxy war. And then you had at that time going on Castro with Russia and uh What's his name? Uh, Khrushchev. And, and then you had Kennedy in the mix. Yeah, he, there was a there was a war, war going on over there, too. OK. And here he is. Bringing people to the truth. Through the religion, the same way that you had the same thing going on in America. But here he is actually performing the way and he didn't have any gun on him hardly no he didn't have a gun 
and they kill they, they try to kill this man several times and they couldn't do it you think you want to tell people in america that when they were out there butchering us like crazy out in the streets um how they were treating us you know people were getting slaughtered and it was all because the sambo which he was well aware was over there did not want to leave Massa's house as the house negro do you not understand that this is why people don't understand their salvation has been missed is because after slavery it was our role to help bring back the proper way to bring it back but the you because of what happened and how it was taught to the europeans it would have ruined i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you how i know they lied if the truth would have been found out it would have destroyed christianity and who was making money off of that all you got to know is who's sitting on top of the christianity today you don't even know the bank the bankers who the bankers who they fund these churches they would have been broke because the, the churches would have realized then who are we praying to as a sorcerer i told people man it was going to be real real stuff not just the stuff that they've been doing with their hallelujah and you know what they've been doing in the, in the so-called things and i'm like you don't get it the way the, the the gifts of the spirit or the power of the holy spirit there is not going to look the same as the people who were talking in tongues and like i told you the people who were reporting toko the most because many of the religions in the in africa were controlled by masonic heads which who they are in fact the brood of vipers and also the wolves in sheep's clothing because he encountered them they're the ones that were like hey you can't do this this will cause us to lose money this was the complaint when he was in congo when people started to do the most high's way they started to lose money this this because they lied about it because they know they're giving uh tithes and offering and sacrifice to the goat god that we were always felt familiar with and Masindisi came to take that away to where it wasn't necessary to keep sacrificing to him okay so he says Excellency preside for this purpose of ticket in 24 uh, Luanda will be reserves. It was 23. We appreciate that your confirmation did that. I extend it, Excellency, your excellent my best for good of the nation. General Government of Angola and Luanda on 23rd September 1974, which I was only a few months old. The president of governing board, Antonio Alvaro Rosa. Coutinho Silva Miranda, as you know, a lot I cannot say, but I must say that we want you with two purposes. Some went with the objecting of the Portuguese government to grant them the leadership of the country. Do you see, this is how you know they lied. He wanted, he was supposed to become running, he was supposed to run Angola. Some of them wanted him to be the, the prime minister to replace Neto. Okay. Think about that. But as far from me, independence has not yet come to Angola. But look at the people I have preached. It is the independence of God. So he's showing the world is like, look, the most high, I, what I'm here to do is show you the difference between how you should run your country with the most high versus men and how you have your attitude so what is that telling you he was he knew angola was under the wrong god at this time but what was the primary religion in portugal and in angola christianity so he's telling them no you need to fix you have a you have a spiritual problem here okay what i mean I, what I mean we went to lisbon he said those who want independence will be the ones who will 
to rule. As for us, we went with another objective. God is the one who will rule us. Boom. Okay. So now, this is how you can tell in the Congo concept is that Toko is saying, you people are acting like God rules you. But that's not what we're seeing here. And you see that's where the hypocrisy, even when you talk about in America, oh, in God we trust. How? You have idols that contradict everything that the Most High talks about. So he's saying, and he's proving his point that, and I know I'm going too long, sorry about that. He's proving the point that as Bakung, as, as he says, as Bantu people, as our, as my followers, we know we really are being ruled by the creator, God, and how we operate. He said, that's not what's going on here in Africa. So he was basically saying Christianity was not really ruling from a God perspective. It was ruling from a what? Power perspective. Those who were controlling people. And this is made clear when you saw that beforehand, how he kicked the Portuguese, how he raised his role to pick the, kick the, port, the Belgians out. What was Leopold there for? What did he tell the missionaries? When, Leo, when he was in Leopoldville and in Congo, and Kimbangu was well aware of this, and then Toko was, you know, he got upset about the Belgians. What were they doing? You don't need to teach these people God. They know this already. We need them to learn it our way so we have what our objective. What was his objective? Resources, taking things out of the Congo for the purpose of what? Greed, money, increase. So they understood, and this is what made him dangerous. If I run Angola the way the Most High wants, then guess what happens to all the Bantu people that live here? Oh, now they start following the law, statutes, and commandments. Oh, then who gets power now? The people were trying to do what? Control. This is why he was a threat to the powers that be in Europe and in America. And they covered it up. Because if he, like I said, he was offered the position to run the country. This is how you know they saw him as a very important person. Okay? Like how Zhao is now. He would have been already that he would have been there instead of Neto. And they were like, no, because I want to run the country the way God, he said, he said I am going to run this country through the most high. Not through the way with how people do it in the world today and say they know the most high. No, it's all delusion. See, and at that point, let me tell you what would have happened. Okay. That ends. The, that's, that's showing you, like I told people, that's the 400 years that is already over. That would have sent the beacon to restore the balance of the kingdom of Congo Din Totila, and he would have been like a king, like the Fumu Yusu, like, you know, like Tok Kimbangu talked about. He would have actually fixed the problem with the Kimbanguas that they were dealing with. That's why he said the refusal, that's why he had a refusal from Mobutu, because he's like, no, Mobutu was like, I don't want this to happen. You bring back the Congo then Totila, I'm mess, that's gonna mess me. That's because if he would have ran Angola through the most high, he would have made Mobutu look like a fool up there when he was talking about I am the god of you know how they're treating the people. He would have it would have made him look ridiculous after everything that happened with um Malumba. Because at that point. He would have been the example that the whole world of the Christianized, even the Pope and Rome and everybody saying, oh, yeah, we follow the most high. And if he would have done it, it would have embarrassed 
the world because then they would have seen the difference in the way the most high rules versus the way the imposter was tricking everybody that he rules. Okay. And this is, we can talk about this in the scripture. You know, we go to, this is the concept when we're going back to when it talks about Cain. And I'm not going to, it says, now watch this. When Lulua heard of Cain's words, she wept and went to her father and mother and told him that Caina had killed her brother, his brother Abele. Then they all cried aloud and lifted up their voices and slapped their faces and threw dust upon their heads, rent asunder their garments. Oh, what did this sound like? Isn't this what we spoke? Isn't this how we did things? Oh, with the, with the, with the dust. Okay, where did we learn it from? Oh, Moses, what? Hello, they rent their garments. Why do you think they want to talk about this? And went out and came to the place where Benham was killed. When they found him lying on the earth, killed the beast around him while they wept and cried from his, from his body and reason of his purity went forth a smell of sweet spices. See? Why do you think you have the sweet spices now as part of the whole concept with the way the world is seeing things? This is where you get the potpourri people selling this stuff. Cain is copying. He's, mo he's a mockery in his brother, really. And they found him lying in the earth, killed him, beasts around him. And Adama carried him, his tears streaming down the cave of trail where he laid and wounded upon sweet spices and myrrh. And Adama and Ava continued by the burial and great grief hunt, see, 140 days. And Abeli was 15 and a half years old, and Kaina 17 years and a half. So he was, that's where I'm going to tell you, I'm about to tell you, that's probably why you're, that makes sense why you become an adult at the age of 18 in America. They probably couldn't do the 17 and a half, so they rounded it up. See, that's that's the whole concept, man. And see, 15 and a half, that's when the Most High says you're actually a man. And as for Kaina, when the mourning of his brother was ended, he took, he took his sister Lua and married her without leave from his father and mother for they could keep him from her by reason of their heavy heart heart and then went down to the bottom of the mountain away from the garden near the place where they had he had killed his brother and in that place were many fruit trees and forests his sister bare him children who in their turn began to multiply by degrees on they filled that place but as for Adam and Eva they gave not they came not together for Abel's funeral for seven years after this, however, Eva conceived, and while she was a child, Adama came there, come let us take an offering and offer up to Tatanzambi. Okay, here we go. Offering. Okay, blessing and offering. Okay. And ask him to give us a fair child in which whom we may comfort and whom we may join in marriage to Abele's sister. And then they prepared an offering and brought it up to the altar. And Fuma began to entreat him to accept their offering and give them a good offspring. And that, that the zombie heard Adama, see, that's the whole concept. You see what they just did there. They made an offering to make sure that their child was going to be in favor with the Most High. Do you even see Christians doing that anymore? And this is part of the Most High's way. <laughs> and we did this as Bantu people. We made an offering to the Most High to have a, the child, you know, this is a Bantwe. This is King Gunza. This is how you know. And then who kind of copies this? You don't even realize it. They still do it. Okay. This is where they turned it into the christening for the, for the, for the, they turn it into the christening for the Catholics. But it's not the same that you think. You don't even know why they really dress the baby up in the clothes that they give them. Because that white was usually used, and this is when they used to sacrifice the M O L O C H. What 
what did you think they used to dress up the children in and also the people? White. It was meant to be a mockery of the Most High's white <laughs> purification. You're going you're gonna to find that everything is backwards. And then and Tata Zami continued fasting and praying until every time came, she delivered, I wish you go to the cave in, in the rock, Tati, and bring forth. And he said, go and take with thee thy daughter to wait thee and remain in the cave. And it's an Eve harking on the dawn. Okay, so next. Why is this thing not going? Okay. And Eva brought forth a son, a mana perfectly beautiful in figure and countenance. His beauty was like that of his father, Adama, yet more beautiful. Oh, so then what would Kusa Kongo been, been looking like? He was without blemish. Okay. So now when you see, now watch this. This is the 40 days thing that we're talking about this according to this. Uh, then Eva was comforted when she saw him and remained eight days in the cave. And she sent her daughter unto Adama to tell him to come and see the child. But the daughter stayed in place with the body and Adama returned. So and when Adama came and saw the child, uh, good looks, his beauty, his perfect figure, he rejoiced over him, was comforted for Abele. And he named his child in Setha, which is Seth. Let's take the H off. And it's Setha. And this is this is what Esau is is trying to mock. That Infumu heard my prayer. See, it says his mean that that Infumu has heard my prayer and has delivered me out of my affliction. Now do you see why Esau is mocking this? Because he can never be delivered out of his affliction. But it also means power and strength. There you go. So that's why he took that name after he was killed and beheaded. Okay. Then after Adama named the child returned and the cave of treasures, came back. Okay. So now what's going to happen is he has all the offspring. He has uh, these are the five. He had um, Kaina, Lulua, Abeli, Akila. Aklia, sorry, and Setha alone. But Aklia is going to be married to Setha. Okay. So now when we get to the, let's see, where is it? This is where the word gun came from, I remember. Let's go to. So it says the devil paints a brilliant picture for Seth to feast his thoughts upon. For as in Seth that when he was seven years old, he knew good and evil and was consistent in fasting and praying, now see, and spent all his nights entreating the, the Fumu for mercy and forgiveness. See there? He also fasted when bringing up his offering every day more than his father did, for he was a fair countenance like unto an angel of the Most High. Now, these are Maliki Congo, not the house of El. <laughs> These are not Lucifer's angels. These are the most high, and they're not this, their complexion is that's why they have to change it. They're darker. It's, they're not white. They weren't like Lucifer, I'm telling you. He also had a good heart, preserved the see the good heart in Tima, and both in Tima, preserved the fine claws of his soul. And for this reason, he brought up an offering every day. And Fumu Tatanzambi was pleased with his offering, but he was also pleased with his purity. He continued thus in doing the will of Tatanzambi. Now, see, there you go. What pleases the Most High? And this is how they know that we are in the days of Noka and their deception. He is pleased with what? His purity. Okay. Purity means you do not mix 
the pagan and the non-pagan together. You are following the Most High Star, that's just the commandments and spirit and the truth. That's how you know that the world is deceived about the fact that they live in the days of Noah and they are the complete opposite because do you see the churches when they came and they started to preach to any of the pagans, were they teaching purity? The way, when they even had the people called the Puritans, do you know how hypocrit? Do you know how hypocritical those people were? As they say, even though they were acting like we were watched worshiping the Mosa, the Puritans were, oh boy, they were bad in many cases, and how they were doing condemnation. They weren't even wearing the right clothes half the time. They weren't. They were wearing dark. They were wearing black clothing. The most high is like we didn't wear. We didn't wear black like that. You know, like Toko when he talked about that's part of the reason why he didn't wear the red sash like we used to, because he mentioned that wearing red was more affiliated now with sword, swordcraft and witchery, and he didn't want to cause people to start doing that with the red and the black, because people don't know that's part of the reason why they have you wearing red and black in these churches for the people who are doing kendoki. And they are, and you don't even know it. Okay. After that, now watch. Now watch how Lucifer is going to appear. After that, he was coming down from the altar. You see, there's an altar. Having ended his offering, Shatani appeared to him in the form of a beautiful angel. Oh no, Satan always come looking like a demon. Lie! You see this? Okay, brilliant with life, with a staff of light in his hand. Oh, that's the that's the wizard. Okay, himself girt about with the girdle of light. Oh no, Satan is dark all the time. Baloney people, Bantu Banabetu. It's a daggone lot. This is how he masquerade. We don't tell people. Oh, he looked beautiful. He looked nice. He looked. You people don't get it. People don't understand this. Why do you think this is not in the Bible as often? This is when we say he masquerades like an angel of light. He greeted Seth there with a beautiful smile. Oh, yeah, smiling. Oh, he's just angry all the time. See what he has taught people? And he began to beguile him with fair words, saying, Oh, Seth, why abidest thou in this mountain? For it is rough, full of stones and sand and trees with no good fruit on them, a wilderness without a habitation and without towns, no good place to dwell in, but all the heat, weariness, and trouble. Now, do you see this concept? This is the Pied Piper stuff that he's still doing today. Oh, I have a much better place over here than what you see. Okay? And he said, but we dwell in a beautiful place in another world then this earth, see this, this is realms. I'm telling you they have it, they exist. One world is one of light, and our condition is the best. Our women, oh, handsomer than any others. See? Oh, come see the beautiful women. Come look. Okay. Oh, Seta, to what happened with Kim or talk with, with uh in Zinga? He went to Portugal. Oh, wow, these Catholic, they're beautiful. And then many of those Catholic women. Oh, you're going to find out they were, oh, my goodness, because they don't festivals used to get wild back in the days when Alexander was the Pope of Europe. His festivals carried into the other provinces. And I'm telling you, you don't even know that they used to get but wow, man. Them Portuguese women are, eh, OK, you think that they're not, pers they got them, boy. And the way because I see thou art fair, look upon them, and this while, and there's not one woman good enough for thee. Besides, all these who live in the world are, are only five souls. Oh, so then you have, if he's showing, we have, you know, souls that are more than just our own that are affiliated with the Pemba Kalunga. But in our world, there are many men, many maidens, all more beautiful. Now let's stop and think about this. Who are these people? Because remember how we talk about Adama had how many children at this time? So where did these people come from? 
in our world are more beautiful, I wish therefore to remove hence, thee hence, that thou may see the relationships but and be wedded to whichever thou likest. Thou shalt then abide to me at peace. Thou shalt be filled with splendor and light. See, this is again serving him. Okay. Thou shalt remain in our world and rest for the world and the misery of it. Thou shalt never again feel faint and weary. Thou shalt never bring up an offering nor sue for mercy, but for thou commit no more sin nor be swayed by passions. Okay, let's stop it right there. This is why they're not going to put this in the scriptures because he's going to show you right there the laws done away with. Oh, there's no more sin no more. Where have you heard this? If thou wilt hearken to what I say, thou shalt wed one of my daughters, for which with us it is no it is no sin so to do. Neither is it reckoned animal. For in our world we have no God. Where have you heard this before? Okay. This is the concept that people don't understand with religion. Do you see how easy it is to paint the picture? He's always, why do you think they say, let me paint a picture? This is where it comes from. He's painting a picture of something that's not true. He's enticing him into something that's not possible. Okay? And yet... And yet, the world is now living like this and don't even know it. This is the whole concept of how we have now gotten to how we are right now. Is people believe in this type of nonsense that he keeps putting in people's head? Oh, I can make my world better than the Most High. Do you see this world? Do you see what's going on? Do you see what's happening with those who have been blinded by the light? That's what that song really means. Blinded by the light. Oh, yeah, you have been. Because he came as a beautiful angel with a beautiful smile. And he had painted the big picture. And bam. Who kept falling for this garbage? The banner betu of Isolele. This is what the most I was so ticked about. He's like, are you kidding me? This joker... He playing your head for stupidity. He gonna put you. He gonna use you up. Let's go. I, I, let's go go to the proof. Okay. Here we go with Bell and the Dragon. Now watch this. This is how you know it was all uh, painting a, a, a wrong picture. And King Astyagus was gathered to his father's. And Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. And Zambayeli Daniel conversed, Danya conversed with the king and was honored above all his friends. So here you have a prophet that's honored above in his, in his land. Now, watch this. Now, the Babylonians had an idol called Bell. If you go to the Taco Bell people, and I'm going to show you that it's there. There's an eye under the bell. That eye is reptilian slit, okay? If you really look closely under the Taco Bell thing, you're going to see that. This is how you know they're still worshiping that idol, and you just don't know it. And there were spent upon him every day 12 great measures of fine flour, 40 sheep, and six vessels of wine. And the king worshiped, and it went daily to adore it. See there, this is the this is how they would bring. This is what when 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 Fumi Yusuf said, "You tolerate that wolf in Jezebel that causes my who sacrifices unto idols." You see that how what he's talking about? Okay, you think this is not happening in in religion where they're doing paganism? You are you your body, the living sacrifice that you keep bringing to them when you are in the paganism. This is, I'm going to tell you right now, this is who you're being sacrificed to. This God. 
If you don't, you're going to find out this, this demon, this demon God, they know that's why the word bell is out there and they have you ringing the bell. And this, now they turn it into something you're ringing, ring them, ring the bell. Okay. The bell is all, this is how they were calling. This is what they were using to, to call these creatures. Like when they do the cowbell, yeah, come on, come on, Bessie, come on home. They were calling these creatures. And this is what you want to call dinosaur is it's a lie. They had these things, they were using them. Who answered and said, because I am not worshipped. Okay. And the king said, why do you not, you worship Bell? Now he asking Daniel, Daniel Zambelli's question. Now watch how you can tell the world has been lied to. This is why they don't teach this scripture in They'll say, "Oh, this is not the this is not the books that were." And this is what it, this is what you know who told you this, and the people who actually wrote it. They said, "Oh no, this is not scripture. We have the sixty six book. That's the Catholic." No, you don't even know. watch why. This is why they don't have it in there. Okay. The king said to him, "Think is not Bell is a living God. See." You not have much he eats and drinks every day. Then in time they say, O king, be not deceived. For this is but a this is but clay within and brass without, and didn't either eat or drink or anything. Now you want to know what culture does the same thing if you go watch Mulan. The Chinese go and they take food to the dragon. They have dragon statues. This they they are doing the same Babylonian ritual in buddhism oh we're going to go eat, take the dragon some food eat dragon where do you think it comes from right here same thing it's all babylonian hit hittite hamadic going back same thing you see this cult this was done in cultures all around the world sacrificing to a, a reptilian god and in america they're doing it they're making you do it spiritually you don't the, the secret society do it behind the scenes where they have them because they cover it up they know they exist and then you're doing it out here they're always sacrificing to the dragon you don't even have a clue going back to the Canaanite practices or the Hittite practices, as a matter of fact. That's why they slay the dragon. Okay. O king, be not deceived. So the king was angry and he called for his priests and said to them, If you tell me not who this is that devours these expenses, you shall die. But if you can certify me that Bell devours them, then Daniel shall die. For he has spoken blasphemy against Bell. So here's how you can tell the difference between the Most High and Lucifer. What did um, Rome used to do to people that they felt was blasphemy against the Creator? They would kill you. They would do they were all, all kind of stuff. You know who also used to do this? The Sanhedrin, the priests. The, they say, "Oh, we gotta stone this." The law says we're gonna stone you. And okay, and the Husakon was like, "Let he who's out saying pass the pass the first stone." Okay, that was the whole concept of seeing the law carnally and not circumcising our heart. When he was pointing this out, it's like. Everybody's sin. How are you going to cast a stone and throw one at yourself? That's when he talked about, you know, don't point out somebody's sin until you take care of yours. If you're going to throw a stone at her or somebody else, then throw a stone at yourself because you're just as guilty of sin. That's what he meant. Okay? Now watch this. Now you see how in Rome they don't, that's why in the Roman culture, Boy, they were doing it. And you you talk against the emperor. Oh, that was it. They pull people apart with horses. They, they put you on the cross. Who do you think they got this from? Who did this kind of stuff? Nimrod, Cain, 
They were boy, they, man. You talk against them, they jack you up. Now, not to say that Most High didn't have his way, but he was like, you know, he could wink at it and say, "Okay, I'm gonna tolerate it this time." But see, this guy's saying, "Look, if he don't, if he blasts him, he blasts him against a doggone reptile. What the heck are you talking about?" Okay, this is how deceptive these people. This is how it goes in the concept of one thing people think that you blaspheme and people are right now blaspheming the most high every day and they should have already dropped dead many people and he they haven't even he hasn't even done that that tells you the difference these heathens out here should have been done drop dead over the blasphemy of what they have been doing to the most high if they if they really knew okay um but if you can certify, spoken in Danzan, it said, let it be according to your word. Now the priests of Baal were three score and ten. Remember this number because this is incorporated in their secret societies. Besides their wives and children, and the king went with Dan and Zambayeli. Three score is 30 and a four, okay, and ten. Uh, three, how, I'm going to see what I always forget how you do three score. Three score and 10. It even said it. See, it's even in the book of Daniel. Three score and 10, which is normally span of a human life in the Bible and Shakespeare, 60 and how it relates. Is the name as a name of sixty and heart release. Okay, so it's seventy to eighty years, which is what usually what was called a generation, or the Most High was seventy years. Okay. And I'm almost done. I'll put some music on here. Uh, where was I? Okay. When we, in the Temple of Bell, so it has a temple. And see, Bell and Ball are, this is why they, they okay, I'm going to tell you how I know they're using this in, the, in, in, in Hollywood. You're the Bell of the Ball. Oh, yeah. Where do you think they got that from? You're the bell of the ball. This is how people don't know they curse themselves with these things, boy. They're coming from the bell. Send me lock me. Ball, send me lock me. Priest said, Behold, we go out. But you, O king, set on the meat and make ready the wine and shut the door fast and seal it with our own signet. And tomorrow, when you come in, if you find out the bell was has eaten, and they little regarded, and they said, "So when they were gone for it, the king set the meat." And now, and Daniel, Daniel had commanded his servants to bring ashes, and those they strewed throughout all the temple in the presence of the king alone. Then they went out and shut the door and sealed with the king's signet, and so departed. Now in the night came the priests with their wives and children as they were wont to do and did eat and drink up all. In the morning bedtime, the king arose and Daniel said, and the king said, Daniel, are the seals holy? He said, yes, O king. But thy behold, as soon as he had opened the, the door, the king looked upon the table and cried out, great, oh, oh, he said, great are you, oh, Baal, and what the, this, there is no de deceit at all. See, this is what I keep trying to tell our people, you know, this is how deceived the heathens can be, or how deceived you can be tricked by Lucifer to believe in something that's not real, or not, or never happens, or is not even possible of answering your prayer. This is part of the reason why now the sorcerer is really tricking people about how prayer is answered. You see, because the most high's prayers can be answered right away when you're in the connection. 
How long do people with Christianity say, oh, I prayed for, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I'm waiting for an answer. You know why? Because this is who you're praying to. And the sorcerer knows, and Simon the sorcerer knows it. Because this was the God he was connected to. I'm like, this is why you don't have the communication with the Most High. If you had the communication with King Congo Tatanzambe, you're going to know things quicker, like quick. It's not going to be, you know, even when we used to, when he's praying, he's looking at the Father. I see his face. We're talking. It's like a conversation. This is how you know these people don't have a clue what they worship when he says, when this is when he talks about, you know not what you worship. We know what we worship. This is where this comes from. Okay. Now watch this. Behold. Then Zion beheld the king that he should not go in. Behold now the pavement and mark well are with thee. And the king said, I see the footsteps of men, women, and children. And then the king was angry and took the priests from their wives and privacy where, where they came in and consumed such things as were upon the table. Therefore, the king killed them and delivered Bel. He said, therefore, now see what happened? Because they betrayed the king, look what happened. And took the priest with their wives and children and showed him the privy door where they came in and consumed such things as were on upon the table. Therefore, the king killed them and delivered Bel into Daniel's power who destroyed him in his temple. And in the same place, there was the great dragon which the Babylon worshipped. Okay, so this is the, they had a clay one, and this is a living one. The great dragon. Okay, why do you think they had the dragon's gate? They had a dragon, uh, Ishtar gate had dragons on it. In the same place was the great dragon, and the king said to Zion, will you also say that this is a brass Behold, he lives, he eats, he drinks, and you cannot say that he is not a living God, therefore worship him. <laughs> you see, I'm telling you, this is how people don't even know. This this is really representing like Jupiter. This is like Zeus. This is like Cain. This is how deceived they were. Okay. This is no different than what happened with Abana when he was in when he was in Babylon with Nimrod, like. These things cannot make your food. What the heck are you praying to? Okay. This is what they call reprobate mindedness, people. Okay. Then said Zamari, I will worship the Mfumu. He said, then said Daniel, okay. He is therefore, therefore then Zamari said to the king, I will worship, then said to the king. I will worship the Infumo of my God, for he is a living God. So he's going to listen. So he, that's why he said he knows the difference between this foolish God that they worship him and the real one. And the problem is now today in these religions that they're thinking, they are so convinced they have the living God with miracles, and they don't even know. The Most High is looking at them like, you're talking to the stupid dragon again. Just like in Babylon, what are you talking about? This is this is Belair. You're talking to the idiot. Just like these people are not talking to them. This not me. <laughs> okay. They're doing the same thing all over again because we're in mystery Babylon. They're praying to this stupid the, 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 the dragon. Okay. Now. They took great indignation and conspired against the king, saying, uh, and watch he said, I will worship the Infuma for his living God, but give me olive, O king, and I will and I shall kill this dragon without now watch this. Remember how the dragons had to be killed in the king. They had remember how this this is how he would embarrass a knight's templar. Because he knew this is why you think he, this is why they took it out because he knew that this was something that they did, and of course these dragons were created through um, uh, uh, Semiramis, you know, Istar and all that, and they you know like they did in Beowulf, and 
what happened is he said, I'm not going to need any weapon and I'll kill this thing. And I'm saying that's what Moses said. was. We knew how to kill these things, but we didn't even need a weapon. Okay. The king said, I give you lead. You know why they took this out of the Bible? Because then you can't tell people about dinosaurs. That's why they did this. The king said, I give you leave. And Zambi took pitch and fat and hair. Now see that Mwanda is telling him what to do to kill this thing, right? Then Dinah took pitch and fat and hair and did seed them together and made lumps thereof. Thus he put in the dragon's mouth and so the dragon burst in asunder. And Zambele told, Behold, these are the these are the gods you worship. When, when they of Babylon heard that, they took great indignation and conspired against the king, saying, The king is, is becoming a Bayuda. Of course, they said the word Jew didn't exist back then. And he has also, and he, see, this is what I'm telling you. If you worship the most high in spirit and in truth, then in reality, you are going to be hated, the real creator. When you do something to embarrass the devil, this is how the response is. I keep trying to tell people this. Because Lucifer, you know, they're going to be pissed not stop because they know. And he said, look, so they came and the king said, deliver us in Zambia or else we will destroy you and your house. Now when the king saw that they pressed him sore, being constrained, he delivered Zambia to them. He was cast into this is why you see the other book when they said he got thrown into the lion's den they cut out the dragon part they have his name but they didn't tell you what he was okay it's done Bell, the dragon is the is further of, the, of what happened in, Jer in daniel look at daniel where he was with six days and the den was seven lions and they had given every day two carcasses two sheep and they had given and they had given them which they were not given to them to end to intent that they might devour and so now they were now there was a Bayuda or nabi prophet called habakkuk oh habakkuk habakkuk Mbaku. okay we talked about how that name habakkuk habakkuk who had been made who had made pottage and had broken bread in the bowl and was given into the field for break in the reapers to bring it to the reapers. But the Malachi of the Fumas said to Habakkuk, go, carry the dinner that you have into Babylon to Enzambele, who is in the lion's den. So here you have a situation. When the Most High needs you to do something, the Ambassi shows up, hey, let's go do this. Do you really see this is the concept that people don't understand the difference between being from the most high and being from the foolishness? When things need to happen, when somebody's in dire straits, when somebody's in trouble, the Maliki says, Hey, I need you to go do this right now. Hey, I need you to go, hey, take care of this. Do you see this happening with people who are getting themselves in bad situations? The Maliki said, oh, go, okay. Now, does it not mean that the, that the, 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 the fallen angels won't masquerade the same way? Yeah, they do. So that they can stay uh, relevant. That's when they masquerade. So Habakkuk Karen said, oh, and Zambarel, Zambarel, take the dinner. And then you have remembered me on Fumu. Neither have you forsaken them that seek you. So Zambia rose and did eat, and then Maliki Kongo of Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. Upon the seventh day, the king went to be well in Zambia. So, uh, and when he came to the den, he looked in, and behold, he was sitting. Then the cry, the king aloud, saying, Great are you, the Fumu. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. If we were righteous in our captivity with our God. That's why I'm trying to tell you. You see the Christians out here, they think they're praying to this same God. 
when in reality they pray to the one who mimic, tried to mimic him. And the problem is, is that because they have to maintain their delusion, it's like, no, it's like if we did something like this, the Christians would say, who is your God that stopped that? We're missing something here. Okay. And that's what I'm telling you is this is what the, 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 the world doesn't understand. We already had this God when we worshiped him as a zombie and poon. We didn't need to be taught this. So that tells you if they already knew God, how did they learn about him if the Christians didn't teach him, teach them? That's why they don't want to tell, tell people anything. How did they learn about the creator if the Christians didn't teach them? How did this happen? See, when they came, excuse me, when Rome came, we knew more about the Bible than they did. And they lied about it. And the, even the, even even Cal was like, man, these people breaking down the scriptures and said, no, nah, we just want them to do what we need them to do. They even said this. These people know more than what we do. But see, that's the whole point. In the, in the world of the sorcerer, they're going to say, oh, this must be sorcery or this must be something. Is You're wrong, okay? But they're like, how can I be wrong if I understand the Bible better than you do? Then who's teaching me? What God am I talking to? It ain't going to be Lucifer. I mean, not say it can't be, but it's like, if I know more than you, but then you're worshiping the same God as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then who are you talking to? When the same God I have will, t will do the same thing. I think you got it twisted here. And that's how it works. And he drew him out and cast those who were cause of his destruction into the den. Okay. All right. So now and I'll read the other one. I was going to do wisdom of Solomon. I, I just want to tell, you know. It goes back to what he says. It says, then shall be the righteous man standing in great boldness before the face of such have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with, with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangers of his salvation for far beyond all of those they look for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this is he whom he had sometimes in the river, the prophet he, he, uh, we fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor but his numbered among the children but he is not but not, how is he numbered among the children of the fucking Tommy and he is a lot among the saints and it says therefore we have erred for the way of truth and the light of righteousness has not shined unto us and the son of righteousness arose not upon us the son of righteousness see we weird ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through the deserts where they lay, lay no way. But as for the way of the infumo, we have not known it. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now. This is going to be what's coming for the people who have been deceived by these false pastors and these false imams and all these false people because they don't know the way of the most high or they would never they would never use the names that they have been given they would use the names that are real that the 12 tribes actually said this is how you know they've been deceived and they're not going to be using the names that come from gog that because they know it they're going to be using the names that come from the real 12 tribes. That's the whole concept of why it's important that they stripped us of our identity. Because look what would happen. Watch this. If you know the truth, then you will know the way. Okay? You will understand. You will have clarity. The fact that many Christians sit up there and they don't know what to do in their life and they don't know how to act says you are praying to the wrong God. I don't know what my 
I don't want, I don't, you know, sit there and they'll go to school and they'll come out, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. No, the creator of the heaven and earth will tell you, this is how I want to do, this is how it has to be, this is how it goes. Boom, go. You don't have to worry about your direction. You will be given the direction you need to go. That's what a shepherd that is true does. The Messiah, the real one, will give you the direction you need to go. Go, Like I said, even when the, it talks about in Isaiah 43, when the Most High's army come, they're going to have direction. Nobody can stop them. They're going to go. Their path is never going to be interfered with. And boom. That's how you know these people talking about, oh, we have the army of God. Then why? where are your leaders at? Where are your generals? Where are your is where is your military commanders? Where is your where is your where is your regiments? Because the most I had it like that. Where are your people at? And on top of that, like I, took, like I talked about in the book of Josephus, okay, and on top of this, okay, if you are the army of the most high, are your enemies fleeing from you seven ways? Like it says in Deuteronomy. When you obey his law, statutes, and commandments, Christians, Muslims, Judaism, any religion, is your enemy fleeing from you seven ways? Like, oh my gosh, we out the door. Peace out, homie. We done. We get, nah, we ain't, nah, we ain't messing with this joker. No. This is not happening. Okay, and that's why we say the bamboozlement is humongous. Everybody's been been tr tricked. You cannot have the salvation of the Most High if you are confused about your assignment, because you will never be confused. You know. That's how you know, because see, let me tell you how you know you're dealing with false pastors. If they had the Holy Spirit, this is how it goes. Or the Most High is going to speak through them. Like I know they told me I was going to be a, a person that would preach. But the creator was like, I'm like, I don't know. But the Most High was revealing to me, he's like, uh-uh, you're not preaching this stuff, like how they're doing it. I got, he said, when I got my mission, you said, you're going to expose Lucifer. Well, at the time, I didn't know when he was telling me I was going to expose Lucifer, that was including the deception of the church. I thought I was going to expose it from the perspective of the church. And then I started to notice as I got more and more understanding of the scriptures, wait a minute. The church is not being honest. Exactly. That was what you were trying to show me. Yes. But they're going to tell you that they're going to keep trying to tell you that they are. It's like, no, they mix the paganism and the pagan non-paganism together. And they have been using several people that have justified, oh, no, that's not what it means, this and that. I'm going to give you an example. This is how deceived the Christians are. They're going to be celebrating Easter on March 31st, like, first of all, this is how ignorant they are. The Passover always came after the New Year. Always. Just to give you an example, on the Jewish calendar, the month of Nisan starts going into April, and they're going to see that they're going to do their Passover 14 days afterwards, which is in the end, towards the end of April. Now, even though I don't recognize this spring, but the spring in Africa, because it's upside down, this is how it went. So technically, and this is how you deceive it is, the Passover, the Ipasika, if you really want to be according to the Most High's Law, they're saying it was 14 days after the New Year, your Passover, your Easter should have been in January. Because that's the new year that you're celebrating with Rome. Okay, that's the, that's one of the deceptions. The other part is 
they're saying, okay, it's 40 days from Lent. Let's keep it on stand that Lent is a mockery from Esau because he got tricked with the lentils. Okay. And he's, he's telling you, oh, we're going to celebrate the fast of the Messiah when he never said that. He did not create another. This is how you can know that they're not lying to you. Kuswa Congo did not create new feast days. Now, people may have recognized the stuff that he did while he was walking, but he did not. He was the high priest of the temple. And you're seeing people now saying, oh, I represent the Messiah in his temple. And you're creating new laws when all he said, I give you one new law is to love one another. And he never replaced it with the second one. It says, don't make idols. That's a lie. <laughs> they did that. He never said to make idols. When they, they said, oh, they struck it out. Oh, we don't make idols. That's why they struck it out, because you're making idols. He didn't strike it out. And there were really more than 10 commandments. People don't get that. Um, now watch this. Therefore, And it says, and as a ship that passes over the wave of the water, which when it is gone by the trace of thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the keel in the waves, or is it when a bird has flown through the air, there is no token of any or way to be found? I'm going to tell you, this is where you got your, this is where Alice in Wonderland comes from, 100%. The stroke of the wings in part with violent nose. Motion is passed through, therefore, no sign there is sent to be found. Or, like as when an arrow is shot at Mark, it part, parted the air with immediately coming together, and so the man cannot know when, when, where it went through. Even so, when we, in like manner, as soon as we are born, begin to draw our to our end, and had no sign of virtue to show, but we are consumed in our own wickedness, because see, that's the concept. When you are born, the path is laid before you. That's why when Fumu Yusuf came, when he was born, he's like, I am here to teach my father's way and I have to learn how to do it. From the time he was a child, uh, when you're born, it says, oh no, you're a prophet. You need to go to this. You need to learn how to do, how to do prophecies. Um, you're gonna be doing this. You're gonna, this is the biggest lie that they have taught you in the cities of Cain. Okay. Your child's occupation is known before they even go to school by the wonder, by the Holy Spirit, by what they're going to be doing. And this is how you can tell they are not talking to King Congo, but to Jupiter. Because he's just letting them do whatever according to what they chose for you. You don't even know they have actually done this through your birth certificate. They know what's, they've already they know what's going to happen to your life, and they lied about it. And you're working towards what they need you to do for the community. That's the, this is how you know it's a lie. They want you to be able to contribute it to the community that you live in. What is the assignment of a disciple in Christianity to feed the sheep? How are you feeding the sheep if you're wanting if you're contributing to the community? But this is how they trick you in the churches. Oh, we're feeding our flock. We all we're all Jesus Christ. He said, "Go find my sheep and feed them." Oh, then we're gonna go to Israel and talk to these people, and they're looking at you like, "Oh, you pagans!" They're looking at you like, "Are you crazy?" The Judeans and people looking like, and that's why people getting like, "Oh, how come they treat us like this?" Because they know they are not the lost sheep. Okay, they're lying to you. They know it. That's why they like treating you like that. But they know who are. That's how they know that they messing you messing them up. But the righteous live forever. The reward also is with the infumu and care. This is why we try to tell people our. The righteous soul never dies. So therefore, you will continue to be able to serve the Most High continually 
okay, in different ways. You can be, like he said, therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and the beautiful crown with the informal hand for his right hand shall be covered in them and with his arms shall be protected. Okay, righteousness, let me, let me spell it out for you. Righteousness is never, never, doing your own thing but it is always doing it the most highest way and i have to even with me i have to always check myself and what the things that are happening this is how we, i that's why i hate the fact that we're struggling so hard in this world because they they know okay you don't, uh, everything you do must be in alignment to the pleasing, like, like I said, in purity to the creator. This is why you cannot be in these churches preaching two different versions of the Bible. And they don't get it. That's why they don't read certain scriptures to you and why other books aren't in there, because now you're going to expose the, the wolf in sheep's clothing. That's part of the reason why you can't talk about Enoch, because that exposes the wolf of sheep clothing in the church, and it exposes the wolf, wolf of sheep clothing in the scientific community. That they're lying to people like, no, that can't be right. We studied this. No, they made the, they made the, they know they made it up, because the enemy, they're using these people to steal while they're tricking people about what they're doing. They, they've dumbed down the these, you know, European, his, you know, these, these historic, they, they've done them down to be uh, the, like the McFly family. You know, they made them gullible to believe the stuff they, that they, you know, they've been telling them and it's like, no, it's not like that. But shh. <laughs> okay. They know. All right, so let me play the song. Again, I don't own the rights to it. Uh, I don't know if I can play this one. I think I might get a strike. But it's called, this is a, a Yehovah. It's a really good song. Let me do, let me see if one will pull up that I like. They'll do this one. I think we'll do, uh, with the care for us to do this thing. Uh, Exercise, no. See, we'll play this one song here. Okay, I don't own the rights to it. Uh, here we go. Let's do this one. I like these people. This is this is telling you the words. And like I said, yeah, I don't own the rights to it, not for redistribution of any kind, but only for the edification of this channel. <laughs> This is this is the original language. They know this is one of the old, this is probably the oldest language on the earth. I'm a lot about it. Come on, 
Messadi came the way. Messadi is serving of the glory. That's why we work. Bantwe, not Christians. <laughs> that's what it that's how we said it. Bantwe, Hamasia Bantwe. Not no Christian. Not no other name. That was what it was. The people of Bantwe means people of the way. Fumuyisu. We didn't say no Lord Jesus. Fumuyisu. That's what we got whipped for it. Because we kept saying Fumuyisu. No, Jesus, Lord Fumuyisu. Whipping us. <laughs> no, say Jesus. Like I said, we knew all of this even before Rome stepped foot in the Tolo of the Antutra. And we even knew this thousands of years ago before the Roman Empire even exists. Okay, that's the lie. The teacher of the of happiness. The Kumu Yisu Long Visaka. Long, long. That's our word. Teacher. And we were singing this before the Christians even knew who he even was. <laughs> we knew this. We were singing songs like this back in the day when we were when we were worshiping and. And we knew him and he was walking with us. Mm-hmm. 
You know this language fluently. But, you know, 400 years ago, they still know. There's people in South America that actually still have familiarity with it, so they know it. They know it was our language. It's here in America that they made us lose it because they know what it can do when we know it. They don't want it, us. They don't want us to know in America and Europe anymore because they, we, they wouldn't be able to control us if we started praying and, and fasting and, and speaking and singing like this again. Oh, that's what this. That's what the secret societies were designed to do. Don't let them sing this language anymore over here. We'll fall apart. And that's why I'm saying they knew that this was going to be the end. If, if, let me tell you something. If we would have been able to do what we needed to do in the 1800s and 1900s, that would have been the end of anything in the world as far as how things were being run because the most High would have flipped it back and it would have brought down the house of Esau right then. And that's what they don't understand. They know it would have brought down the house of Esau of Cain if we would have stayed unified. And that's why they're still fighting it even now to continue to work their magic and their deception to keep the house of us us divided and use their, their all their their resources against us. And this is why the most I said I'm about to get rid of it all. I said they're gonna turn on each other, you're gonna find out. Everybody who's involved in this stuff is gonna be exposed. And see, like I said, you know these people, the problem that's frustrating is they're singing it right, they're doing it right, but they're doing it through the greco Roman interpretation, and that's what's bringing down our energy, because when you're passing the money, and you're doing these things, and you're making contracts, you don't know in secret they know you're talking to that bell with the ball i don't know what this does me to do i gotta go there Hallelujah. Sala Kambote. Ingita. Like I said, you know, many people have already lost out on their salvation and they're not going to believe me. And they're not going to believe us because that was the role of the wealthy. That was their whole intention is that you never know this because they would lose they would already have lost all of their power, all of their money, everything they would already have lost if they would have actually done the what the warning was given. And that's what makes it so frustrating is we're now, the world's going to, a lot of people are going to pay for it. When they find out, they missed the boat. They rejected, they rejected the truth and they did not do their job to feed the sheep and they destroyed the things that were supposed to be holy all because of the you know the fact that they've been lying to people and then sadly we gave it up ourselves when we shouldn't have 
And this is what's going to be the greatest shock that the world will find out is like, no, you were always going the opposite way. And that was the whole role of the people who were running the system that you were always in the NWO because they were not telling you that you're worshiping the other side. And that's when you're going to find out that that's going to fulfill scriptures about the people who are going to say, we have inherited lies from our forefathers. And then when he comes with all of the judgments that's going to be in there, they're going to try to, you know, put an end to their life and they won't be able to. But at the same time, they're going to be frustrated to find out there's stuff that was missing about the whole things about the end of days and what's really going to play out. You see? All right. Zola Kringi Sambalola.